with Teacher Shaddai. Hello, hello, my ever-enthusiastic grade 6 learners! Welcome to another day of fun and learning, only here on Deped TV, where learning English is fun and exciting. Are you in for another reading adventure? Learn more with me, your teacher Shaddai, as we explore your favorite classroom on TV together. This is English Hour. Ready thinking for what's up and coming. Hi kids, I'm going to draw you a map right now. And it's going to look like I've drawn a mountain. But it's not a map of a mountain. It's a map of the plot of a story. You might say, what? How is this map related to the plot of a story? What makes the plot of a story look like a mountain? What makes it pointy? These are great questions, and to answer them, we're going to talk about analyzing the elements of a plot. Many stories follow a similar pattern. Good readers know what these patterns are and can talk about them using the right terms. Wait! Before talking about plot terms, let's get ready! Pens? Check! Paper? Check! Let's begin! Kids, before we continue on to our map, let me first introduce to you the plot. The plot is the sequence of events in a story, and more specifically, how the story develops, unfolds, and moves in time. Plots are typically made up of five main elements which make up our map. These are the exposition, rising action, climax, falling action, and the resolution, or the denouement. Now, let's go back to our map. The plot starts with the exposition, where we learn about the characters and the setting. Then, the author introduces a big problem, which we call the conflict. As the characters begin to interact with the conflict, or as they try to solve the problem, the storyline goes on an upward slope, which is now the rising action of the plot. When the conflict reaches the top, we hit the most thrilling part of the story, which is the climax. This is the part where the conflict can't go any further. It's the top of the mountain and there is nowhere else to go but down. After the climax, which is the most thrilling part of the story, we are led to the falling action, where the story winds down, for the problem has been solved. Then, the characters prepare for the last phase, which is the resolution. This is where the author wraps up the story, and the characters get to reflect on what they learn. The resolution. Wait, you might have been confused with all the words we just discussed. In order to make sense of them, let's apply all these terms to a story. I am going to read to you a story entitled, The Man with the Coconuts. Take note of the important parts of the story plot. One day, a man decided to head for home after he finished gathering his coconuts and loading them on his cart. On the way home, he met a boy, whom he asked how long it would take to reach the house. If you go slowly, said the boy, looking at the load on the horse, you will arrive very soon. But if you go fast, it will take you all day. The man could not believe this strange speech, so he hurried his horse. But the coconuts fell off and he had to stop to pick them up. Then he hurried his horse all the more to make up for the lost 
time. But the coconuts fell off again. He did this many times, and it was night before he reached home. Kids, let's do this activity. Do you still have your pens and paper? Great! Are you ready? Let's begin. Directions. Read and analyze the events taken from the story, The Man with the Coconuts, and arrange the events according to the plot elements in the plot map. Ready? Set? Go! Number one. He could not forget what the boy had told him and asked himself. What logic was that? He wondered and wondered and never found an answer. Where shall we put this event in the plot map? Yes, it should be in the rising action. The rising action includes all the events that lead to the climax. It also presents some type of conflict, which in this case, the man being confused by the boy's statement. Number two. One day, a man decided to head for home after he finished gathering his coconuts and loading them on his cart. This part of the story belongs to the... Uh-huh. Correct. Exposition. The exposition usually occurs at the beginning of a short story. Here, the character, the man with the coconuts, is introduced. It also presents the setting of the story and other facts necessary to understanding the story. Number three. Again and again, the man rushed his horse that was pulling the cart. And again and again, the man had to stop to gather the coconuts that fell off the cart. Would you consider this situation as the pick of the story? That's right! This is the climax. The climax is the high point or the point at which the central conflict reaches the highest point of intensity. In this story, the man was tired of stopping and gathering the coconuts that would fall off the cart. Number four. Finally, the man reached his home late at night. Did the boy's statement prove to be right? What point of the plot does this belong to? You got it right! It's the falling action! The falling action is the point where all loose ends of the plot are tied up. Here, the boy had proven himself right. Number five. Only after the man reached his home later than expected did he understand what the little boy had meant. What did the man realize? What do you call this part? Absolutely correct! This is the resolution or denouement. The story comes to a logical ending with the characters reflecting on what they learned. Here, the man had realized the lesson taught by the little boy. Kids, have you plotted the correct elements in our plot map? If you've done it, can you give me a thumbs up? Incredible! If not, don't worry. We still have this next activity for you. Directions. Give a thumbs up if the statement is correct and a thumbs down if it is wrong. Number one, the exposition, rising action, climax, falling action, and resolution show the elements of plot 
in order. Answer, thumbs up. Number two, the following action is where the conflict is introduced. Answer, thumbs down. Number three, the drama and suspense begin to build in the rising action. Answer, thumbs up. Number four, the conflict in a story is the struggle between two opposing forces. Answer, thumbs up. Number five, the following action provides a link between all the actions in the climax up to the end of the story or the resolution. Answer, thumbs up. Number six, the part of the plot that introduces the characters is the rising action. Answer, thumbs down. Number seven, the part of the story that ties up all the loose ends and takes care of the conflict is the resolution. Answer, thumbs up. Number eight, the highest and most suspense building part of the story is the rising action. Answer, thumbs down. Number nine, the events that lead to the resolution comprise the falling action. Answer, thumbs up. Number 10, the events of the story presented in a sequence by the author is the plot. Answer, thumbs up. Kids, how well did you do? Did you get the correct answers? Wow, that's great! Kids, do you know what time is it? Yes, it's recap time. Let's put together all the concepts we learned today. The plot is the most important element of a story. It is literally the sequence of events, and in that sequence, we learn more about the characters, the setting, and the moral of the story. It is composed of several elements. The first part is the exposition. It is the part of the plot that establishes the main characters, protagonists, and setting. We get to know who's who, as well as when and where the story takes place. The rising action follows. In this part of the plot, the conflict is introduced and is built upon to create tension both within the story and the reader, who should ideally be feeling more and more drawn to the text. The conflict may affect one character or multiple characters. Now, we get to the climax. The climax is the most important part of the story. It is the biggest plot point which puts our characters in a situation wherein a choice must be made that will affect the rest of the story. Tensions are highest here, instilling in the reader a sense of excitement, dread, and urgency. And guess what's next? The falling action. This is when the tension has been released and the story begins to wind down. We start to see the results of the climax and the main character's actions and get a sense of what this means for them and the world they inhabit. It also tells us how the character's choices affect themselves and those around them. And last but not least, we have the resolution or denouement. This final plot point is when 
everything has been wrapped up and the new world and the new sense of normal for the characters has been established. The conflict from the climax has been resolved and all the loose ends have been neatly tied up. Analyzing a story's plot involves examining the ways its events unfold and the devices the author uses to advance them. Exploring a short story's technique in plot development, including its structure and major conflicts, can give us an insight into the author's craft and design for the story's events. Well, I hope you had noted all that information down for you will be needing all of them for our next activity. Ready? Let's start! Directions From the given set of clue words, identify which element of the plot is referred to and write your answers in your notebook. Number 1. Thrill, Tension, Choice Answer, Climax. Number two, final part, solution, wrapping up. Answer, Resolution. Number three, setting, first part, characters. Answer, Exposition. Number four, release tension, effect of choices, winding down of the story. Answer, falling action. Number five, tension introduction, conflict introduction, reader drawn to the text. Answer, Rising action. Number six, processing skills, analysis, technique. Answer, analyzing. Did you get a perfect score? Wow, that's really amazing. Let's gear up for the next activity. Kids. Are you ready to test your skills in analyzing the plot of the story? Of course you are! A long time ago, there was a king who ruled a rich and prosperous island. He had all the things a king could ever ask for. The power, the wealth, and all the delicious food one could only imagine. The king's name was King Barabbas. The people in the kingdom would approach him for help, but he would always refuse. As he neglected his kingdom, people started to complain and starve. After some time, an old hunchback woman showed up at the castle begging for food while the king was eating. The old lady asked for food as she was starving. Go away! I don't have anything to give you. Can't you see I'm eating? Said the irritated king. Please, my king, begged the old woman. I'm asking for whatever you can give me as I am so hungry. Even a little piece of bread or fruit would do. Get out of here. You disgust me. The king belittled the old beggar. After a few days, the king slowly weakened and became sick. No one knew what was wrong with him. He got weaker and weaker and he lost a lot of weight. He began to look older than his age. Soon after that, the king died. As unfortunate and unexpected as it was, no one cried and nobody showed up at the king's burial. He died alone. One day, there was a fruit tree that grew on King Barabbas' tomb. The tree had lots of fruits. The people learned to eat the fruit, which saved them from starvation. 
And because the tree was from the grave of their king Barabbas, and it had a crown just like their king, they named the tree Barabbas after him, which in time became Bayabas. Ready for the next activity? Then, here we go! Oops! Get ready with your pen and paper. Directions. Analyze what element of the plot each item represents. Choose from the choices flashed on the screen. Number one. A long time ago, there was a king who ruled a rich and prosperous island. He had all the things a king could ever ask for. The power, the wealth, and all the delicious food one could only imagine. The king's name was King Barabbas. Answer, exposition. Number two, the people learned to eat the fruit, which saved them from starvation. And because the tree was from the grave of their king Barabbas, and it had a crown just like their king, they named the tree Barabbas after him, which in time became Bayabas. Answer, resolution. Number three, the people in the kingdom would approach him for help, but he would always refuse. As he neglected his kingdom, people started to complain and starve. Answer, rising action. Number four, after some time, an old hunchback woman showed up at the castle begging for food while the king was eating. The old lady asked for food as she was starving. Go away, I don't have anything to give you. Can't you see I'm eating? said the irritated king. Please, my king, begged the old woman. I'm asking for whatever you can give me as I am so hungry. Even a little piece of bread or fruit would do. Get out of here! You disgust me! The king belittled the old beggar. Answer, climax. Number five. After a few days, the king slowly weakened and became sick. No one knew what was wrong with him. He got weaker and weaker and he lost a lot of weight. He began to look older than his age. Soon after that, the king died. As unfortunate and unexpected as it was, no one cried and nobody showed up at the king's burial. He died alone. Answer, falling action. Kids, were you able to get the correct answers? Incredible! I am so proud of you, my enthusiastic grade 6 learners. Wow, you all did great! Two thumbs up and say hooray! Today, we learned more about analyzing the story plot. Yes, we all did! Believe that you and I with Teacher Shaddai, together we can. This has been another day of thinking, doing, and learning right here on your favorite classroom on TV, The English Hour. This has been your Teacher Shaddai saying, learn English today and your dreams are just a word away. Keep it right here on Dapid TV. Ready thinking for what's up and coming. Goodbye, everyone!